Hello and welcome to another AI only video. We're asking the question, uh, what if you could see the United States from Europe? Yes, this is maybe not the most accurate map because you would see parts of Canada as well, but this is a quite fun map before we see a complete expansion of having the United States. I thought this would be fun to cover. So we will see if the United States will expand into Europe. I might have buffed them a little bit to give them a chance, and it's also would be neat to see if they could form their own empire of United States of America. We'll see if anyone does that, but besides that, it's pretty normal. If you would like to see more videos, so make sure to like and subscribe and let's get into it let's aim for around 100 likes to get more of these ai only videos i gotta say the thing that i'm worried about the most is them getting off of this new united states island i think it might be a little hard i know they don't have probably the most diplomatic range and another big thing is uh, the catholics they're also catholic so it's going to be hard for them to do holy wars or even fabricate claims on these guys so they might have to unite everything and then go across or they'll have to go after these islamic nations for holy wars but i think they could do it and hopefully uh the byzantines don't mess up this video that's the only thing i gotta say a big reason why i'm worried about them getting off this island is that they're going to have to do naval invasions and with naval invasions in cq3 right now uh you get an embarkment uh, penalty a disembarkment penalty and so uh, if someone catches them fast enough when they land, they'll be able to get destroyed. And these nations aren't that powerful. They're, they don't have that many troops. Some are more powerful than others. But in reality, these nations are pretty average for the time being. Um, hopefully they can consolidate, get a lot of strength, and then uh, go over and invade some countries. Well, we just saw Aquitaine. So Aquitaine's here too, so might as well announce that. The big thing is that since we're starting on the 867 start date, we always gotta look out for this yellow empire. They do quite good actually, and I hope they keep it up. Uh, whatever in the middle of Europe, this is just border gore galore. We also have to remember the Vikings will be taking over the British Isles, so it will be a little different. Um, than the usual 1066 and usually we do the 1066 just so then i don't have to record as long as the videos because i usually go to the end date the only reason why i won't go to the end date is if this mod somehow crashes the game but we'll still probably go to the end date unless that happens we're just in the start and already in the united states we've had new hampshire pick up maine and we've also had north carolina pick up massachusetts so uh actually no they didn't they picked up wait a minute am i stupid they picked up connecticut i gosh i should have researched my i i just I don't know why I thought that was Massachusetts, that's Connecticut. Um, so Connecticut is uh, taken over by North Carolina. Please don't flame me. Please, hopefully there's no Americans watching this. But uh, New Hampshire uh, took out Maine. So we have two more powerful nations. I'm sure someone else will probably pick up some more land. North Carolina was also going after Maine because apparently Maine was super weak. And then we just got border gore everywhere else right now. And it's pretty border gory for the most part in this uh, early start date. Something I didn't even think about it, people from Iberia have conquered into the United States. I didn't even think about that being a possibility it's because north carolina was a little bit weaker um so these guys came in and claimed some territory i don't know if these americans are going to like that because america has never been invaded so this is going to be quite interesting and then new york took um what's it called uh connecticut from um north carolina because north carolina just kind of fell apart it's it's hard to talk about earlier start date like what's happening you can see west francia is looking like a wing ring worm like i don't know what's really going on with them they're looking disgusting um dane law which is the norse guys that are usually in england are doing quite good but looks like they're actually getting crusaded right now so maybe they'll lose some territory um but west frank is looking disgusting everything else looks disgusting byzantine's not doing too good yet but everything's kind of kind of normal except for these guys are looking pretty good i don't remember this really happening ever but it's pretty normal and the uh, united states actually kicked out uh, the iberians from invading so we'll see maybe if they're able to unite um in the next like 400 years i 100 percent missed this uh south carolina is in africa I don't know when they did that. Uh, South Carolina is in Africa, and then also Florida is going invading Africa right now too. So it looks like a United States are colonizing Africa. Mm. I got no comments for that. I'm just going to go to the next part. So the early start date is always really weird because all these kingdoms like East Francia, this L nation that I never pronounced because I don't want to say it wrong because I pronounce everything wrong and West Francia all have like kind of claims on each other. So they always go like back and forth. So like they claim each other. And I also think they have like claims on Italy too. So you just see them all like switch hands all the time. Eventually, I think they lose all the titles and they stop switching. But for the early start date, for a while, they're just switching 
off over and over again. We do have New England here. I'm pretty sure this was formed by New Hampshire, if I'm not um, incorrect. So New Hampshire has New England, which is a duchy that is here, but they also conquer New York. So they're looking probably the most powerful. Um, they are a nation I buffed a little bit more than the rest, just because I want to give some people uh, more of a chance. I do have to say though, uh, they are Admite, which is a very uh, weak religion usually. It's an organized Christian faith, but usually it doesn't do quite good. But you know, if we have a weird religion in the United States. It would be quite interesting and I kind of would like it. I don't know what's happening with religion in the United States, but it's all over the place. New England and New York are Admite. Then these guys are Kenite, I think it's pronounced. I could be wrong, but they're all a different religion too. And then also, uh, South Carolina got kicked out of the United States, so now they're an African nation only. It's it's a quite interesting so far. Um, it looks like some people are doing a crusade on uh, Jerusalem right now, but Europe and everything looking pretty ugly. Sweden looking good. They could unite this entire, uh, what's the, is there not really a peninsula, is it? Nah, nah, they could unite Scandinavia. I think I would be killed for calling Scandinavia Peninsula, but they're gonna get close to uniting it. I doubt they will, um, but they are looking quite good, especially for this early in the game. So we'll see, we'll see. The good old yellow nation that I said was going to do really well, um, they collapsed, and that might be because I haven't really played the earlier start date with 1.4, and we all know empires are struggling a lot in 1.4, so that might be the reason for their collapse. So the middle of Europe is now completely disgusting, like it's disgusting, but the weirdest thing ever, this nation is literally called the Populous Uprising. Like that is their duchy title. I've never seen something like that. I've seen them always create something, but it's literally the Populous Uprising is the name of their realm. Yeah, and then Frisia. I don't know what they're doing. They're trying to like make my Dutch video, I guess. I, I, I really don't know. The big bad Byzantines are starting to really look good and usually they do pretty good, but I gotta say, there's no one in the entire game that's a threat to them. They have 11,000 troops, and I don't even know if the next person has 5,000 at this point. Maybe Sweden? Yeah, Sweden's powerful, but they don't need to worry about Sweden. Everyone else, super weak. They, they could pretty much conquer whoever they want at this point. If we go over to the United States, we only have a couple of contenders. It's really North Carolina, Virginia, Georgia. A lot of other people have been eliminated at this point. Uh, New York and Pennsylvania are hanging out. Same with Florida, but there's a lot of other people that are really looking good. Is uh, Yeah, Florida's actually about to die right now, so I think Florida's going to be out, and then it's going to be between like really Georgia, North Carolina, and Virginia. They're, they're, they're the main stakeholders now in the United States. North Carolina has formed our first kingdom in the United States. Dixie is the southern kingdom. They are looking quite good. They have pretty much 50% of the United States, so I would have to say North Carolina is probably going to unite the United States. Um, in the rest of the world, we just have the Byzantines really conquering everything and then no one else really doing too much besides England and Sweden. Everyone else in the Central Europe is doing awful and nothing's happening out here in Asia. But hopefully we have someone pick it up in the middle or else the Byzantines are just going to shoot up through Russia like they do sometime. I just realized Dixie is like the Confederate South. Oh, hmm. Well, I guess we're in an alternate history where they're going to unite the United States of America instead of the North. So the United States of America has formed, and as we can see, it looks like they will be Admite, which is quite interesting because usually there's not a powerful Admite nation. So we'll see if this will either help them or hurt them. New York is still independent, but it's only a matter of time until they fall in the hands of the United States. Uh, I doubt they would stay independent for too long, but now it's time to see if the United States will expand past USA. If it's anything like history, yeah, they probably will. They're going to be like dictators and just like destroy. Oh, New York just got inherited. Okay, never mind. New York is now involved. So it looks like the United States is time to uh, expand and they'll probably kill everyone because just like, you know, real life probably. So hopefully they won't kill too many people. A cool thing that I did not notice about this mod is that all these kingdom titles and empire titles, they're actually an elective. So that means that there's an election for these titles. So one, cool because democracy in the United States, yeah. And the second thing is that also means that these na this nation should probably stay together for the rest of the video. So instead of it just given to random people, it will go through election and there shouldn't be much splitting because uh, only like the United States empire title will exist. The United States is in Iberia and I'm gonna say they probably will expand quite fast because Iberia is really messy 
and so is France. Wait a minute, Sweden? Sweet Sweden's in France? Interesting. Otherwise, border gore, disgusting. Byzantines are doing really good already, which is, it's not even the second star date, it's not even 1066, so I have a feeling the Byzantines are just going to crush it in this series. But they actually might fall apart because they're expanding maybe a little bit too fast. Uh, but Sweden, please stop. It's disgusting. It's getting worse. 100%. Like, I thought for a little bit it was getting better. Um, no, now Brittany's also in Scandinavia. Denmark is creating some disgusting border. Oh, I, it's, it's too late for this. I'm serious, guys. I, it's disgusting. I, well, we, we should find a new game to play. I think we should go to, like, Roblox or something. Because this is, this is just hurts the eyeballs. Like, I have 20-20 vision. I might need to see an eye doctor. I, I think this hurts my eyes even worse, though. The Byzantines just being amazing it's it's like 1066 it's 1073 and they look amazing absolutely amazing and i hate when the byzantines do good because there there is no one to stop them at this point they are the most powerful nation by far they have 26,000 troops and like the united states has like 10,000. um so hopefully they collapse the only way that the byzantines do not win this game is if they just collapse like now the only way the USA has some ugly borders, so they have the United States, they have some land in Iberia. They also have some land up in, like, Belgium, Germany, Netherlands, uh, over here for some reason. They also had some earlier over in, like, Ma Hungary, but, like, that got... It's it's disgusting. I, I might just wait till the end of the game at this point. Unless something major happens, this is disgusting. US, please clean up some borders. Someone clean up some borders. This is... It's been like this for 100 years now. Byzantines, I actually maybe want you to win. I also forgot this is on 1.3 because that's when this mod was making. So the Byzantines might not actually fall apart. They might actually just win this game. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. But hey, Byzantines, I can't do that. I'm going to get demonetized. So the United States has kind of um, got in a hold in a couple of places. Uh, they kind of have the south of uh, Iberia. And then they're also getting a little bit of Italy. They're actually invading the papacy right now. I don't know how well that's going to go. Um, I just hope they get something going because the Byzantines, they're not stopping. Yeah, uh, they're going to win. And I don't think they'll fall apart because we're on uh, 1.3. Um, they could fall apart, but yeah, I don't think so. It is 100% between the Byzantines and the Americans. Uh, there's no one else really even close to them. They're definitely the two most powerful nations. And by far, um, the United States is really picking it up. Um, they are getting uh, the coast of Africa and are getting close to getting all of Iberia and then they're also getting a lot in Central Europe too. While the Byzantines continue to get rest of Africa, it's going to be interesting when these two uh, fight. It also is really weird because they had an alliance with each other at one point. They don't have it anymore, but hopefully they don't work together because if they work together, they're going to split the whole world uh, in half. The Mongols are here. And to be honest, I am actually quite excited because the Byzantines are far reaching. So they will most likely border each other at some point, as long as the Great Khan doesn't die immediately. And when they border each other, that means the Byzantines could lose a war and they would lose all their land. Because all it takes is one war with the Mongols and they take over everything. Um, so I am a little excited because I think it's very possible that that could happen. And the Byzantines are starting to struggle. Egypt got their independence. Wallachi got their independence. A whole bunch of other places, like little places, did too. So the Byzantines are a little weak. So hopefully the Mongols can strike. It's happening way sooner than I thought. The Mongols actually barely bored the Byzantines, but they decided they're going after them right now. So if we just look at this war, this is the land they would take from the Byzantines if they won. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if who I want to win, the Mongols or the Byzantines. I doubt the Mongols are going to win just because they have way less troops than the Byzantines. The only hope the Mongols have for winning is that the Byzantines get declared war on by several other nations. Um, otherwise, the Byzantines should be able to defend them. But also, this early on means the Mongols can probably afford several wars against the Byzantines. So this is going to be interesting. This might be the longest war I've ever seen. The war between the Byzantines and the Mongols have been going on, you can see right next to my face, 15 years. It, they're in a complete stalemate at this point. Um, neither of them have winning. Uh, they both have max, uh, I mean... The Mongols have max 100% occupied, but the Byzantines have won battles. So until the Mongols win battles, it's going to be stuck at this percentage. So we'll see what will happen. They have to capture an error, win some battles. Um, so we'll see if uh, things change or if this is going to be a forever stalemate. Uh, so the Mongols won, but they didn't keep the territory. They just gave it all away. 
That was probably the most horrifying thing I've ever seen. Um, yeah, the Byzantines just blew up completely. The Mongols didn't keep any of the land. They literally insta-released it. Um, yeah, so, uh, the Byzantines just blew up. So it looks like it's gonna be the U.S.'s time to shine, because the this is disgusting but also so impressive at the same time i wish i was recording the second it blew up because holy cow it was it was it was interesting to watch so now it looks like it's just uh the united states time to shine for those of you that don't know and want to know why the mongols always collapse this is why look how many wars they have right now um there's at least 10 i don't know if they actually have more but they have at least 10 wars going on right now they could they probably could have more and these are all attacking yeah i don't know why paradox made the ai like this but they just throw out every war and they just lose every war because how are they supposed to win 10 wars at once there's too much too much to do so i this is one of the biggest frustrations i have with the mongols the ai is just beyond beyond garbage doesn't know what to do just trash. So that's that's why the Mongols always collapse, if you didn't know. The Mongols lasted for like 70 so years. They did pretty good. They destroyed the Byzantines, which is kind of what I always want them to do. So it was nice to see them. Uh, now they are show their former selves because they collapsed. They usually don't expand too much past when they collapse. They can uh, get a little bit of power, but usually not much. We do, however, see that there are a couple of kingdoms that are rising from the Byzantines. We got Pontos. This is doing good. This is a uh, big name, can't pronounce, and these guys in the A. There's actually a couple kingdoms that are doing good. I don't think any of them will be able to uh, defeat the United States of America. Egypt is doing kind of good because they're actually Orthodox in Greek. They're actually not the regular Egyptians that are here. So there's actually plenty of kingdoms from the Byzantines that are, are powerful, but they're probably going to just eat each other up instead of expanding more more from this land. I think I spoke too soon. The Mongol Empire is back. I've never seen them completely, they completely collapse and they're actually looking quite good right now. This is definitely like the strongest nation, second strongest nation besides the United States. The United States is doing amazing, but the, the, the Mongols are, I don't understand how they're doing this good. They collapse, but they're back. Um, they're actually giving some of these Byzantine nations a run for their money. I don't know if if we see them until the end of the game, it'd be interesting. They have a hundred years left. They they could last till the end. I'd be quite surprised to be the first time I see that. Um, however, this Indian nation could actually uh, kill them because this Indian nation down here uh, is looking quite strong. I've never seen this Indian nation usually pop up here. Uh, I've seen it a couple times actually, but they're doing real good. I really haven't talked about the United States of America too often. I've kind of been letting them do their thing, but they're really doing good now they've officially gotten reached all the way up to scandinavia and they're almost at the um bottom of this little tip of africa so we should see them keep on going strong they have been trying to kill the pope but the pope is too strong for them because the pope is op um however they're really starting to unite these lands there's only a couple nations they really have to take out before they're like completely united and they'll have all iberia france and pretty much germany so no one can really stop them at this point um yeah so they should well, the only people that can stop them are themselves because I'm pretty sure at some point a rebellion's gonna break out here and they're going to collapse. Uh, this always happens. We get like a hundred years and in the last hundred years of the game, the most powerful nation collapse. So we should see the USA collapse probably pretty soon. I hate it sometimes when I'm right. The United States empire has fallen and now we have Denmark and the United States here. Yeah, I'm not, not really too happy about this. The United States is dying. Denmark, which is pretty much the United States, but the second half is taking over. Um, yeah, and it's disgusting. The border gore is real. The empire has fallen. Maybe one of them can take the other one out and consolidate the power, but it, it it's going to be rough. It's going to be a brutal civil war, and I don't even know if anyone will be winning this by the end of the game. So, yeah, it's disgusting. Everything's falling apart. There's no real winner, except for there's, there's one nation that sticks out to me. This nation in India. Oh, uh, they're looking good. Really good. This is best nation in the game by far um fantastic didn't even touch this part every everything else in the world disgusting instead of the good old civil war the north and the south it's a uh, united states of america and denmark for some reason I, I don't get how that makes sense but that's what we're dealing with so yeah um we got 50 years left i probably will just wait till the last 50 years to go over because it's it's everything's trash everything's ruined nothing nothing looks good anymore this just makes me sad you guys were doing so good at some point why you have to fail me again usa and now it's like real life we are a little bit past the end date and it looks like the south rose that's pretty much what i've figured from this campaign so the united states empire is doing pretty bad but the dixie kingdom which is pretty much 
of the South is starting to thrive again. They've taken a lot of Denmark, part of Sweden and Norway. They have a big chunk of the northern coast of Europe. They're looking quite good. They're pretty powerful, actually. They're probably actually one, one of the most powerful nations in Europe. Besides Italy, Italy also looks pretty good. So really, Italy and Dixie are the ones that have really come up on top, even though everyone else has fallen. Um, I think eventually these two would uh, control a lot more land. Everyone else has come out of it. The United States Empire has completely fallen. They have almost no land really anymore. Um, I think Dixie would eventually take over the United States and then claim the title and be the United States once again. But outside of here, we need to look at some big ballers out here. Some of the big ballers we have are Jerusalem. Look at Jerusalem. This is probably the sexiest Jerusalem I've ever seen. They're actually Orthodox and Greek because they formed out of the fall of the Byzantines. All, most of these nations are Greek and Orthodox. They, they formed from the fall of the Byzantines. But the big player at the end of the game is this empire in India. This empire is amazing they're huge right now they have 91,000 troops and that's because they're in a war for 10 years they've lost most of their troops in there but they are huge this is Rajasthan they were doing super good uh, it's the grand clan of Rajasthan uh, they just changed their title based on, I think on their culture or religion um, it's amazing they're looking fantastic they're actually getting a big kingdom here down here so they're even in it larger so i think they would eventually take over everything which is quite unique because we usually don't see an indian nation take over everything so quite interesting to see or in this area as i would say um so it's great to see and but to be honest the border war is kind of disgusting it was a quite interesting game i have to say that's the thing i really liked uh, the mongols made it really interesting let's go ahead and take a look at the faith religion um and oh the united states made it messy so admite which is almost never here has pretty Pretty much replace Catholicism. Catholics are pretty much nowhere besides the British Isles. They're really starting to die. Um, the Byzantines did a great job at spreading Orthodox. Pretty much no one's taken over what they expanded to. Um, this religion up here is still thriving. Um, usually they're completely extinct at this point. And this nation is pretty much the last hope for the Islamic nations. They're pretty much the only Islamic nation that's really powerful. Every other Islamic nation is pretty um, small besides this one, but really they, they can't do too much. So it's interesting to see. Coptic actually was able to spread a little bit but this borders are misleading because it's uh in uh africa and really they don't hold all that territory there's a little empty barren somewhere um but overall i have to say this is quite interesting empire titles um there's a bit of change with the byzantines obviously they always change it and then the only other one was united states got some claims in uh africa so part of africa is now part of the united states i didn't know if you guys knew that but that is how it is now other than that um really no other empire titles have changed it is quite interesting and we'll we'll, we'll, we'll end the video with that so if you like this video make sure to leave a like and subscribe this was a, an amazing video i was trying to get this out by fourth of july and if you guys can't tell i had to record this over several days i've been working a lot at my uh, part-time job they've been making me work 40 hours a week so it's not really been a part-time job i uh so i really haven't had too much time for youtube so i've been trying to get this content out for you guys so i hope you guys enjoy it hopefully we can make more content i'm kind of requesting to work a little less so i can focus on content but hope you guys enjoy this video see you in the next video see you later bye have a good one if you like this video check out some of my other content i do timelesses i do let's plays i do challenges i do a whole bunch of stuff and so if you liked it check out some of these videos on the screen now some playlists and thank you for supporting the channel i actually appreciate it i couldn't do it without you See you later, have a good one, and have a great rest of your day.